Hi, this is Matt Cathall. I'd like to introduce you to Human Performance Personal Training. I wanted to give you a little company background. First started with uh, Agoscu uh, in the 1980s, assisting with their clinic. Uh, then opened my company in uh, 1991 and uh, worked as a uh, strength conditioning coach for Division One school uh, baseball. Um, also worked with the Navy SEALs, uh, worked as a consultant with Metrics, the largest uh, nutritional supplement uh, company and sponsor at the time in the 90s. Um, worked for them for about five years. Uh, also provided continuing education programs starting uh, in 1991 um, through my company and taught nationally and still teach nationally uh, with uh, hospitals, specifically physical therapists, occupational therapists, athletic trainers, personal trainers, etc. Also provide health club consulting, teaching seminars, design, etc. Um, and then we've been providing personal training programs since uh, 1991 uh, for all the way from professional athletes um, to high school athletes, to elementary school kids, uh, to moms, dads, etc. Um, also been providing ergonomics and corporate wellness programs uh, for companies like Sony, Genentech, uh, Walmart, many wineries throughout the Napa Valley, uh, so on and so on. I've uh, been involved in that business uh, since 1991 and then of course started the Human Performance Personal Training Facility here in Napa uh, in the year 2000 and fully opened it up as a fitness center in uh, 2004. Human Performance provides a fully personalized training system and anyone can use personal training that's trying to attain a physical goal, uh, whether they're motivated or not. The personal trainer really provides the evaluation uh, of what the client needs, whatever it is they're doing, whether an NFL quarterback or a regular Joe just trying to get healthy. Uh, we have the ability to evaluate that uh, on a very deep level and to decide upon what best program would suit that person. Um, and from there, the personal trainer and the client work together and continually changing the program, upgrading it uh, to make it most successful for the client. And we either do this out of our fitness facility at their home or actually at their business. Our, our hours typically run from 5 a.m. till 7 p.m. at night, uh, that being our fitness facility, uh, which offers memberships or for personal training at any location. The evaluation uh, that we do with our clients um, is very detailed. Uh, we typically receive a health history form waiver from uh, the client and the doctor, and we go through doctor's reports to best determine what the client may need uh, in order to achieve their goals. Uh, we also do uh, study measurements of blood pressure, body fat, weight, anthropometric measurements on a regular basis to see morpholog morphological changes as well as changes in the inside of the body, ex exterior and interior changes. So not just looking at the body itself, but actually seeing what your heart's doing, your blood, uh, fat, etc. So that's something that's usually typically done on a weekly basis. We also do a postural and gait analysis, uh, which allows us to identify your structure and what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. So we really break down the nervous system, the brain, the muscles and the bones, and using uh, physics measurements, we do a detailed analysis using these tools to decide upon which muscles and bones are out of whack, and this helps us determine what your exercise program should be, whether you're a pro athlete or whether you're just a regular Joe or mom and dad just trying to get in shape. This analysis is essential and usually is not seen in most uh, personal training uh, practices. So we include this as part of that, and it's a major core of our program. We also provide nutrition analysis. We find out what you're eating, what you need to be eating to make those changes. We'll take you grocery shopping. Uh, we'll show you how to make smoothies and salads and do all kinds of wonderful stuff. It's a fun adventure. We also do a cardiovascular analysis to figure out what your heart's doing, uh, what your cardiovascular system is doing, uh, how effective your body is, is burning body fat, this mitochondria, mitochondrial enzymes. So we kind of figure out where your engine is at and what we need to do and how to build it up to make you healthier, give you more energy, and to lose body fat. We also do a strength and flexibility analysis to, to again, to determine what your uh, strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, and this combined evaluation will help us determine the best uh, direction of your health program. A little more detail. Health history is essentially an encyclopedia of your life. We discover your strengths and weaknesses, whether it be in your nutrition, your exercise, uh, sleep, which is a major problem with a, a lot of clients that we uh, initially see, uh, products that are used in your body, uh, medications, uh, emotional stress, 
uh, these are some of the things that we look at in helping determine uh, how to best uh, produce a safe and effective program for our clients. This component, blood pressure, we measure blood pressure um, because it tells us a lot about your hormones, your heart health, uh, what's going on inside your arteries you know, via atherosclerosis, arterial sclerosis, plaque development. Uh, this gives us an idea of your chances for a heart attack, a stroke, um, how we should interact with your doctor, and how we, we should uh, move forward in designing an exercise program that is safe uh, so that there's no injury. Uh, body fat. Next evaluation is essential to knowing what a person's fat to muscle mass is. Much more accurate uh, than uh, body mass index or BMI that's uh, used popularly. Uh, we prefer uh, using a caliper. There are other better uh, ways to measure body fat, uh, submersible weight, um, uh, bod pod, uh, but the caliper is a pretty accurate way of determining where a person is at. Um, and then, of course, with body fat, we, we need to know that because there's an association with nearly every disease, whether it be obesity, depression, cancer, joint disease, allergies, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, etc. So uh, body fat is a really nice measurement to have. With posture and gait analysis, we, again, like to do this because... Um, Injuries, lack of activity, overactivity, poor exercise leads to ineffective training results. It can lead to pain, injuries, poor posture and gait. So we take the posture and gait analysis to break this all down to avoid injuries, which are so common in weight training programs, whether it be for Olympic athletes or for high school athletes or whoever it might be, non-athletes. Uh, without this, it's hard to evaluate the structure uh, the studs in a wall, what, what is the structure doing? Without that information, how do you really create an effective program? Um, so what we find is a lot of people don't do that, and um, it leads to ineffective results and definitely leads to injury uh, and performance issues, whether it be sports or non-sports. Um, posture and gait analysis, as we found and I've been teaching over the last uh, nearly 25 years, is one of the weakest parts of most medical professionals, personal trainers, physical therapists, occupational therapists, chiropractors, um, using that as an assessment tool to figure out where the person's at. There are some that do it, um, but really where the gold is at, once you actually attain that information, is what do you do with it? You know, Once you find what's broken in the house, uh, how do you remodel it? So it's sometimes it's easy to evaluate that, but it's another to actually determine what you need to do. Um, and this really tells us volumes about uh, imbalances in nerves, brain, bones, muscles. Um, that could, could and should be addressed in every exercise program, whether it be flexibility, strength, cardiovascular, balance, agility, whatever it might be. In this slide, we see um, what I would say is near close to ideal posture and what that would look like. And so whenever we evaluate a person's posture or gait, we're typically looking at these specific variables. We're looking at the head positioning, shoulders, hands, hips, knees, ankles, feet positioning, and with this, uh, we can take measurements based upon what it is supposed to be and determine exactly uh, what muscles, bones, and nerves are involved and how to proceed in pr providing the most effective program. And again, with that information, uh, you're kind of shooting in the dark and don't know exactly uh, what exercise to use with the client. Um, this combined with all the other evaluation data uh, that we obtain uh, makes for an awesome and very effective program. A lot of my clients will ask me, uh, you know, what is posture and what are postural problems? Typically, we see this through, you know, people's forward uh, head leaning posture, arms rotating forward, kind of the ape look. And uh, for an example, we take a look here at the pectoralis and the upper body and the back muscles. Typically, we notice that forward head posture rolling into the shoulders that can lead to injuries, performance problems, uh, pain, etc. Because the biceps, the pectoralis muscles that you see here in this slide. Uh, are overly strong and tight. They're known as tonic muscles, um, and they have a postural function. They're always shortened in response to improper training protocol, overtraining, lack of activity, etc. And you'll see the rhomboid muscles, the trapezius muscles. These muscles have a dynamic function. They don't have a postural function, and they uh, are what we know also as a fast twitch muscle. And they tend to deactivate, weaken, lengthen in response to hyperactivity or overly strengthening of, say, the biceps and pectoral muscles. And this in itself starts to lead to postural problems, gait problems that can affect how you run, how you walk, how you lift weights, um, 
pain levels, uh, how you breathe, uh, how many calories you expend per minute, etc. So this is one thing that we would look at uh, in saying preventing uh, injuries such as neck problems or even treating uh, neck pain or shoulder pain or elbow or wrist pain, mid-back pain, thoracic outlet, outlet syndrome, carpal tunnel, golfer's tennis elbow, uh, neck pain, uh, headaches, TMJ, etc. Taking a look at the lower body, we can see um, a couple different muscle groups. One, one particular set of groups that we really focus on is the psoas major. It originates in the lower back, uh, lower thoracic bones, lumbar bones, and then inserts on the inner part of the thigh bone. Uh, it's traditionally hip, known as a hip flexor muscle. And usually the biggest problem that we notice in back problems or ability to produce force or strength in the, the legs or back area is uh, a muscle imbalance between these two muscles. The psoas major is like we talked about with the pectorals and biceps is a postural muscle. Um, it is an endurance muscle. It's meant to be used during posture and it's uh, side effect from overuse, lack of use, improper training protocol is to shorten. And this typically leads to what we see in lower doses or uh, over concaving of the lower back uh, and a forward tilting of the pelvis, which leads to a lot of anatomical problems. Um, and with this, uh, the antagonistic muscle uh, to the psoas really is the gluteal muscles, in particular the gluteus max. <clears throat> and the gluteus medius and minimus. And by strengthening these muscles, this helps to alleviate uh, imbalances in those areas in the lower back, the abs, the pelvis, um, and allowing uh, the lower body to function normally in most ways. So uh, abdominals are important in strengthening and should be used, uh, but what I find most of the time is that the gluteal muscles are not strengthened enough and the psoas muscle uh, or iliacus muscle is not stretched enough in order to provide uh, a sound structure uh, and a strong core in preventing back problems, hip problems, knee problems. So what happens in uh, when you have these muscle imbalances? You can obviously be strains and sprains or damage to the muscle or ligaments. Uh, but also uh, long-term wear uh, is not only a, a possible injury in those ligaments and tendons that may have to be surgically repaired, uh, but there's also even maybe a worse side effect, which is a degeneration of a hyaline cartilage or cartilage that's in the articular capsules of most of the joints throughout the body. And there's something on there called hyaline cartilage, and when the bone's not moving how it was originally meant to, that cartilage on the outside, uh, which produces um, a, a liquid called synovial fluid, which helps lubricate the joint, starts to wear away. And without that cartilage, you don't produce the synovial fluid. And again, that leads to a wearing out of the joint. And typically, most the way this is dealt with now um, is a either a, a full replacement of the joint or a, a partial replacement of the joint uh, to help decrease pain and uh, restore normal function. Um, but it is very possible to treat these issues and to pre certainly prevent them from happening in the first place. And so this is a big concern of ours in working with any athlete or any average person that's trying to get in shape. We can see in this picture, uh, this would be an example of a, a standard good posture, again, like in the animated model. Um, and just to kind of, kind of get an idea of the importance of this, again, is that it takes approximately 40 calories per hour for this person to stand. And this is what we call with good posture. And it takes approximately 176 pounds of force to maintain this posture at the fourth lumbar vertebrae and 418 pounds of force to maintain the body um, at the ankles. So it's a lot of force being produced. In the first asymmetrical posture, what we see is it takes roughly 120 calories an hour to stand as opposed to 40 calories per hour to stand and nearly doubles in the amount of force that's needed uh, in the lumbar four and the uh, ankle. So 352 pounds at the fourth lumbar and 836 pounds at the ankle. So we're not talking about five or ten pounds here. We're talking about hundreds of pounds of difference. And you can only think about how that would affect, say, an athlete's performance, the amount of uh, calories that have to produce, uh, fatigue, strength, flexibility, there's a lot going on here, or how it affects the average person and their energy levels, uh, how they feel, uh, or their predisposition for injury. So this has to be addressed, and this is a pretty typical posture for a new client of ours that we've seen since, uh, I've seen since really the late 80s. So when we design an exercise program, we call that our exercise prescription. And that's information that comes from a doctor, a physical therapist, OT, information that we've uh, obtained through our analysis and develop an individualized stretching and weight training program based upon those evaluations, your goals, and of course, if you're playing a sport too. 
Um, we also develop individualized cardiovascular program based upon your evaluation goals, sport, health history, and um, really everything that we found throughout all the evaluations. Um, but particularly your cardiovascular test will tell us a lot about re really where you're really at. Um, we try and make the exercise sessions obviously very um, stimulating. Um, we want to keep, keep them fun, uh, make them enjoy for our clients so they can one, continue and will continue exercising for the rest of their life. We try and periodize these programs, meaning we try and change them, sets, repetitions, duration, uh, weight, um, length of time, and the body likes this. It doesn't want to keep doing the same thing, and I don't think either the mind likes to do that either. So uh, we try and periodize it. Exercise program is typically changed every session to make the session more fun um, and to give the body a different look, uh, which will help challenge in other ways so they succeed faster. Um, and without doing this, uh, a person can plateau and notice a difference in how quickly they're making changes. So our goal here at Human Performance is to oversee the mechanics and safety of our clients. We want to avoid injuries, and if we're not doing our evaluations and exercise prescription uh, properly, um, the person will not achieve proper um, results and it won't be a safe program. So whether it be the short term or the long run, the, the person may get injured due to improper evaluations, lack thereof, uh, or improper exercise prescription. Uh, Got to motivate your clients. Um, I think that uh, average trainers, therapists, whatever it might be, um, are can be very successful with their clients without using all the uh, educational information I'm talking about because they're phenomenal motivators. Um, if you can get someone moving, no matter what prescription or evaluation you're using, that can usually take a person a long way. So we try and uh, or like to say that not only are we good at doing our evaluations and our exercise prescription, but we're phenomenal at keeping people motivated. Um, obviously, we got to educate our athletes and educate our clients. We want to make sure that they understand exactly what it is that they're doing um, so that they know how to do this on their own and for the long term and it makes sense to them so you get more buy-in. We try and individualize the program at every step of the way. Um, typically we'll look when a person walks in the door every time if even if they're training five days a week we'll look at postural issues, ask about fatigue, injuries, discomfort, ask about nutrition and try and motivate the client and make adjustments in their daily program based upon how they're feeling or looking every single day. We also contact the clients on a regular basis, daily even, uh, texting, email them uh, to ensure consistency and uh, provide them with any new programs. We email our clients and provide video on their own websites uh, for their exercise program so they, they can always follow what they need to do uh, via our website or emails or uh, their Facebook, whatever that might be or however they like to communicate. We support our clients in and out of the fitness center uh, constantly. And we, do, again, do that through uh, making connection via email and texting, phone calls, whatever it might be. Um, and so those are our, our real main goals. But we really got to have fun. Without the fun, um, it gets boring, and we tend to lose clients if, that, if we can't make it a fun environment. And our trainers have been working together for so long. Um, we're all really best friends, and it, it enables us to have a lot of fun. So it makes your hour uh, go by very fast. So that's always a, a goal. Um, again, evaluate and change in the program regularly to reflect the needs of the client. Can't emphasize that enough. Uh, is essential to a successful program. It's an example of a typical workout. Uh, we'll do stretching typically for 15 minutes. Our clients sometimes will do the stretching before the workout, but they can also be done during the workout. Um, and again, these stretches are a reflection of a program that we've made for you based upon your physical evaluation, your posture, your gait, injuries, etc. So it's a very specific stretch program that you'd be performing. And typically athletes uh, or regular clients will do an aerobic session. Uh, typically by themselves either before or during the workout and that can last anywhere between 30 and 90 minutes and then most of the time that we spend with our clients is done in strength and agility work because most people like to do their cardiovascular their aerobic work by themselves so we spend a lot of time on strength and agility work to help fine-tune posture increase muscle strength balance agility 
uh, or strengthen injuries or help them get ready for their sport or whatever it might be. And typically that will run up to about an hour. And at the end of the workout, we'll typically do another stretch, whether that's during their session or after, which is typically another 15 minutes. These times are all very malleable based upon the amount of time the client wants to work out. Some clients like to work out one hour. Some like to work out two hours. Uh, if a person's got a back injury or a knee injury, elbow, shoulder, uh, sometimes they might be in there four or five hours to help mitigate the pain. So a typical workout is between 60 and 90 minutes and most frequently between three to five days a week. Here's an example of a period periodization chart and this essentially gives you insight to how we think about your exercise sessions, whether it be cardiovascular, running, agility, non-weights, whatever it might be. Uh, we try and switch these things up uh, based upon uh, your physiological system to obtain the best results uh, in trying to attain your goal, uh, as well as physiologically trying to make sure that your cardiovascular system and all of your systems are working properly and that you're healthy. At Human Performance, we add a strong nutrition component to our clients' programs. Um, and it's a very intense program that's very lengthy, lengthy in learning and disseminating. So we typically focus on what is essential for the person, what do they need to eat in general to stay healthy, and then we get more specific based upon whatever symptoms they may be having or whatever goals they have. So we focus on the basic macronutrients. These are foods that you will need in order to survive, sustain life. Um, and of course, during our sessions, um, we do a, spend a lot of time on explaining uh, what each of these food groups are and what you're supposed to eat, how much, etc. And a lot of our clients like us to do a nutrition seminar that would include themselves, their friends, and family. That's a, an hour to several hour seminar where we go grocery shopping. Uh, we have a lot of food and supplements on the table. We make smoothies and we make sushi rolls and do all kinds of fun stuff to help uh, our clients understand what it is that they should be eating, how to eat it, how to make it. Another component to nutrition that we focus on is micronutrition. So you've got your macronutrients, which are your proteins, your fats, your carbohydrates, and then there's the micronutrients. Those are more or less the things you don't really see, which are your vitamins and minerals. And these are nutrients that are typically excessively low in most of our clients that we start working with. And so we get them healthier by starting to add the fruits and vegetable component to it and supplements if necessary. Uh, there are a lot of great supplements out there that are very, very beneficial in helping a person attain their essential needs uh, in their nutrition program and trying to get rid of uh, nutrients that are non-essential that the body just does not need in order to sustain life or, or to prevent disease. And then, of course, water. Uh, there's a basic recommendation how much a, a person should be drinking of water per day. Uh, and probably the worst component we see in people's programs is their water intake. Um, and typically is counterbalanced, unfortunately, through uh, excess of alcohol or caffeine intake, uh, which essentially flushes water out of the body along with uh, essential vitamins and minerals.